This video is how to set up a brand new Trust Wallet. So if you've downloaded the application, click Get Started right here, and then it will take us through to the page where we can create a new wallet. Now within Trust Wallet, there's actually two different types of wallet that we can use within the same application, and they have different pros and cons. And so I'll go through setting both of these up and why you'd want to use either one or the other wallet within Trust. So from here, we can click Create a New Wallet, and then it says Create a Passcode. This is an app specific passcode. So you can choose something for the app. If you delete the app, then the passcode goes away and you can just uh, choose a new one. Of course, you can change it in the settings and even take this away as well so that you don't have to use it. For now, I'll just choose a simple one. And then from here, it's gonna take us through to actually setting up a wallet. So you can press skip in the top right hand corner, but probably not a good idea. When we're creating a wallet, what we're doing is creating a private public key pair. And the way that we recover the wallet in case the app gets deleted or we lose our phone is through a recovery phrase. This is extremely important because the recovery phrase that we're about to get is our wallet. It's our master key and our backup. And so if we want to reload our wallet elsewhere, we can just put this 12 word phrase in and get our wallet back. If we lose this phrase, then we've lost our wallet and lost all our money. We'll never get it back because this phrase is unique to us. So what we can do is we can back up manually or back up to iCloud. Now what happens with iCloud or Google Cloud is that the phrase is going to be put in a file and you can encrypt that and keep it in your cloud account. If you think that's safe, then you can go ahead and do that. But of course, that means that your secret phrase is now in the cloud. If it gets hacked in any way, or you lose that file or something like that, that's an issue. Because if someone hacks the file, they then have your phrase, therefore they have your wallet and all of your money. And so backing it up to iCloud will leave your phrase online, which is a, uh, you know, a something to consider because that is a, an attack vector. We can also back up manually. This means literally writing the thing down on a piece of paper. So I'm gonna choose back up manually like this and just agree to all of this. You can go through that. Now, of course, uh, writing the secret phrase down is very important because like I said, you need it to recover your wallet. So we're gonna press continue. And then this is my phrase. So the app has now uh, made a brand new wallet and this phrase I have to write down and keep somewhere safe. So you can write this down, make sure that you go through this process, press continue. It's gonna ask you to re-input these words in order and that is your wallet and it's now set up with Trust Wallet. Once your wallet is set up, you can change all of the backup settings for your secret phrase. So if you go to the settings in the top left and then you can change your wallet's backup right here. So if you click the three dots, it says back up to iCloud or back up manually. You can choose to do that here and rename your wallet. If you go over to preferences, you can change that right here. So the currency that everything is valued in and then security. I've turned on face ID here, but actually you can just turn off the passcode if you want. So you don't have to go through that and turn it off and it's not gonna uh, ask you to log into the app with a passcode or face ID. Security scanner is for transactions that you go through with. Um, so I would leave that on because if it knows that there's a scam, obviously that's gonna stop you signing a transaction that is a scam. So now what we have is our trust wallet and we've either backed that up manually or we've backed up the seed phrase in our iCloud. From here, we can also set up a Trust Wallet Swift account, and this uses a different type of wallet. So we'll go through that now and some of the pros and cons of this. So we have our wallet here. If you go to settings again, click on wallets, and then up in the top right, there's a plus button. So click that, and it says create a new wallet, either a brand new secret phrase. So you can have multiple of those in the Trust Wallet app. If you click that though, there's an option for uh, Swift. So I'll just go through with the passcode here, and down here it says Swift. So show details. This is a wallet that is set up without the seed phrase given to you. And it uses either your iPhone or Android phones, secure enclave, and also your pass key accounts. So let's go through how this actually works and some of the pros and cons of this. When you're setting up a wallet like we just did, we got the seed phrase and we wrote that down. Now that's obviously an issue because you're writing something down on paper. So the way that uh, Trust Wallet try and give you a, a new type of wallet is to use your phone's chips 
to generate the private key of the wallet. And then it stores all of that in your keychain or your pass keys account. So this is something that Apple and Google uh, have where you can store passwords and other important information encrypted end to end. So it's only on your device where you actually get the wallet and the private key of the wallet. And it's shared amongst your devices through the pass keys functionality, which is end to end encrypted only on your devices. So yes, this is stored in the cloud, for example, Apple's and Google's clouds, but it is end to end encrypted, meaning that Apple and Google actually don't know what it is. And it's only unlockable and you can only decrypt it using your devices. So this is a way to remove the pass code, the, the seed phrase that we've just written down and not have to deal with that. Here's some pros and cons that you can have a look at. So this is the secret phrase that we've just backed up. It's 12 words and it has great functionality across blockchains. It's very, very uh, easy to use across any chain, full support for any chain. You can use this phrase to reload it in a different type of wallet. The cons are you have this paper thing written down with your words on, which is obviously ridiculous. With Swift, what they do is use the secure enclave and pass keys to get rid of that phrase. And so you just log back into Trust Wallet with your biometrics, essentially. There's no need for a, a phrase or a password or anything like that. The downside here is that it lacks a lot of functionality. Uh, in terms of blockchain support, crypto support, and dApp support. And you can't reload this wallet on a different app or device as of right now. So there are some pros and cons. This is the uh, way that they're created. So you can have a look at this as well. What you can see is this is normal trust wallet. So you get the key, it's stored on your phone, and then you're given the seed phrase. With pass keys, which is trust wallet Swift, you get the key, it's kept in your device on the secure enclave, but the encrypted backup is also within your pass keys account. So it's not in your iCloud because that isn't end-to-end -end encrypted unless you choose for that to be, but it is in your uh, keychain for Apple and Google's version, which is end-to-end -end encrypted um, and only unlockable by your devices. And as you can see down here, uh, you unlock that with your biometrics. So that's the two ways uh, that you can have different accounts on Trust Wallet. With the Swift Wallet as well, you can actually pay gas in any token. This means that when you're carrying out blockchain transactions, you don't need to have the gas token in your wallet first before using the blockchain. So if you're sending around stable coins, you can send it and pay gas in the stable coin. So there are some advantages to this type of wallet and some disadvantages as well. So we're gonna create this. And it says, here is the pass key to your wallet. So you have to make sure that pass keys are turned on and enabled. And that what's really important is that if you delete that pass key from your keychain account or Google's version, if you delete it, this wallet will be completely gone and lost forever. You can't get it back because this is end to end encrypted. The only share of this wallet is in your keychain. And so if you delete that pass key, it's impossible to get anything back. So that's obviously something that you have to be aware of and make sure that that pass key never gets deleted. Otherwise your wallet is deleted. So just to be uh, obviously aware of that. So we're gonna press continue. What happens if the pass key is deleted? I'll lose access to all of my wallets and my funds. So really important to know that, got it. And then we're gonna set up the Swift wallet. So that's fine. And as you can see, just like every other pass key, if you use these, you have to log in with that pass key. So we'll press continue. And then this is gonna set up a Swift wallet through the pass key and we can use the uh, wallet just as normal. So there you go. So we have this Swift wallet, recover with face ID or your fingerprint. And uh, you can, at the moment, transact on these chains, as you can see down here. There are more to come. I know that Bitcoin is gonna be coming to this as well. At least Trust Wallet have said they want to add that. So this is a different type of wallet with pass keys and it's an account abstraction wallet, meaning that we can pay gas with any token that we want when we carry out transactions. 
This Rift wallet that we just set up is not linked in any way to the original seed phrase wallet that you saw me create at the beginning of this video. This is the one that's in our keychain. So if we delete this application, we can reload Trust Wallet brand new, set up a completely new seed phrase wallet, and then just press Swift Wallet again. And because we have this in our keychain, this will be reloaded. So it's not linked to the first wallet. However, they are different wallets. So if you go to the top left and then go to wallets here, you'll see that they are actually completely different. That means that all of your addresses for your assets are different as well. So if we go to Swift Wallet, press BNB and then receive, this wallet address is specifically for this coin in my Swift Wallet. If we go out to the other wallet here, that is actually a different wallet address. So we go to main wallet, you'll see the balances are different. I've got a balance here where I don't have in Swift, my addresses are different. So you can use each of the wallets separately as you wish. If you wanna know how to send and receive coins or swap assets within Trust Wallet, I'll leave that for the full video guide linked down in the description. I'm James, it's Manny ZG, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.